year four it's miss forehand here i hope you're all doing well and staying safe now before we start our new topic in science i want you to take a look at the pictures on your screen and have a think what do all of these have in common common so pause the video and think about this All of those pictures were living things, and that's our new topic for science, living things and their habitats. Now, I want you to get your papers and your papers, exercise books, and write down the long date, Tuesday, 28th of April, 2020, and write down the LI to recognise that living things can be grouped in a variety of ways. So pause the video and do this now well done so all of the images that we just saw are of living things also known as organisms my turn organisms your turn organisms even though they might be different from each other they share certain characteristics and all living things do certain things to stay alive these are called life processes things which can grow move, breathe and reproduce are called living things and after growing and living for a long time, living things ultimately die. Examples of living things are human beings, animals and plants. Now I want you to pause this section and read through it again in your minds and try to tell your adult in your own words what you just read. Well done. Now to help you remember what sets living things apart from non-living things, you can use this mnemonic to aid you. You should have been able to familiarise yourself with this mnemonic during your previous year's learning. And we'll go through it again over here. Mrs. Bren, which stands for movement, respiration, sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion and nutrition. I want you to pause this video and write this down. Well done everyone. Movement. Animals move to get from place to place and plants grow and turn towards the light. For example, a cheetah can move very fast whilst a tree may show very little movement. Respiration. Plants and animals both use oxygen from the air to turn their food into energy. Sensitivity. Living things are able to sense their surroundings. They can respond to a change in sound, heat or light. Growth. Animals grow and develop from babies to adults. Seeds grow into plants and some change in appearance. Reproduction. A living thing can make a copy of itself through reproduction. Animals lay eggs or give birth to their young, and most plants reproduce by forming seeds. Excretion. Plants and animals use various ways to get rid of the waste materials from their body. Animals excrete waste through urine and feces, and leftover water and gases leave plants from their leaves. Feces is just the scientific terminology for food. From our previous digestive lesson, do you recall the name of the organ which removes feces? Pause the video and have a think. The answer was anus. Well done if you got that correct. And the last one, nutrition. The process where living things get or make food. Plants make their own food and animals feed on plants or other animals. Green plants use energy from the sun via photosynthesis. Do you recall from our previous learning, what do we call animals that only feed on plants? Pause the video and have a think. We call them herbivores. What about animals that feed on only other animals? We call them carnivores. 
What about animals that feed on plants and animals? We call them omnivores. Well done if you remember that correctly. So all living things share the characteristics that we just went through the Mrs. Gren characteristics. That's how we know they're alive. Living things have lots of similarities, but they also have many differences. So we can use these similarities and differences to sort the living thing into groups. I want you to take a look at the pictures over here. Which picture is the odd one out and why? There can be many answers to this as long as you justify your reasoning. But pause the video and have a think. Well done everyone. I would say that the bird is the odd one out because the octopus and the fish, they live in the ocean, so their habitats are different. Did you have any other different answers? Write it down in your exercise books and take a picture and send it over to me. So now grouping living things. I want you to take a look at the pictures we have over here. How would you group these living things? Pause the video and draw this in your books. Well done everyone. So how I grouped it is in the first one I did plants and in the second one I did animals. So that way we're showing their differences. So even though they are living things, they are different because one of them is animals and the other is plants. Now I have a question for you. Can an organism be in both groups at the same time? Pause the video and tell your adult what you think. Over here, I have a Venn diagram. So I still have my categories of plants and animals, which show their differences. But in the middle, I have the camel and the cactus, which shows their similarities. Because in their habitat is that they both live in the desert. So they're both living things and they live in the desert. So that is the similarity that they have. Pause the video and take a closer look at the pictures. Now I have a task for you to group living things based on their similarities and differences. We have a Venn diagram over here. Let's look at an example, use the pictures and put them in the correct category. So for whale, we have lives in water, gives birth and breathes air. So let's see, at the bottom we have gives birth, um, I mean we have breathes air and lives in water. So they fit in both of those categories. So I would put my answer in the middle like this. Now I want you to go and do the same for the rest and think carefully. Some of them might not be in both categories. They might just be in one, such as lays egg. So you're showing the differences and the similarities. Now, based on how confident you feel, you could also do this activity to look around your house, in your garden or your surroundings when you go outside for your daily exercise and make a note of the living and non-living things you noted and noted down in the table below and your purple pen activity. What seven characteristics do living things have which distinguishes them from non-living things? Now, if you still don't feel 100% confident, we have this task to use the pictures and organise them between living and not living things. So these worksheets can be found on the school online learning platform. Remember to write your long date and the LI and complete your work. Make sure your work is neat. And once you're done, email me a picture at year4 at grange.harrow.sph.uk. Well done, everyone. And Good luck.